I am Vikram Aditya and welcome to JH Softech and JH uh, Infotech as well. So in this session, we are going to discuss about uh, very basics of SAP. So if you are completely new to SAP, uh, this would be very important for you. Even if you are working in SAP for, for, for a considerable amount of time, there might be a few things that you, you can learn from this uh, session. So please go through this uh, entire session. It's very important and uh, value for your time. So let's start. Now, this screen which we are able to see on the on uh, on the screen is uh, something which is the first uh, screen in SAP, where once you log in into SAP, this is the screen that you are going to see, and this is called the SAP Easy Access screen. Once you give your credentials and log in from the SAP logon pad, this is what you will see. And then uh, from here, you have something called favorites and SAP menu. These are the two main things that you're going to see here. And in this SAP menu, we'll have a couple of things. Now, anyone who is working on SAP, uh, whether it might be uh, uh, end users or consultants, consultants of different types like functional consultants, technical consultants, or administration uh, experts, anyone has to start their work from here. This is the main screen. So it's, it's always good to have a complete knowledge on the basic screen so that we can uh, use all these uh, tools and uh, options uh, clearly. So let's start off with uh, the favorites. Okay, so before we start with favorites, let me tell you that uh, if you want to open a particular screen, there are there are ways to do it and uh, to, to directly go jump into a particular screen uh, just like we have website address for uh, websites we'll have something called transaction codes here in SAP now there are two ways of going ahead with the transaction codes either you can browse it from this uh, SAP menu or you can directly type the transaction code so let me show you a, a particular transaction code uh, for example like let's say we have logistics in this we have the material management and then we have the purchasing and then we have the purchase order and here we have the create uh, so here we have create change and display or maintain supplement and all so we have vendor unknown so i'm creating a vendor unknown vendor so when i double click on it it opens a screen here and the same screen can be opened using a direct transaction code called ME21N. You can see that transaction code here. So here it opened ME25 for uh, creating a vendor of uh, uh, creating a purchase order with an unknown vendor. So if it's a uh, vendor vendor and supply plant known, then this is a screen that will be uh, that will be open. And for this, the transaction code here is ME21N, which which I was talking about. So let's say we have ME21N. So I can directly type here ME21N, and then we will get into the same screen here. So going forward, all the professionals will always prefer to access the access the screen using the transaction codes rather than rather than uh, uh, transaction code rather than the um, uh, uh, rather than this uh, browsing so this is what normally all the consultants will do so here we have this me21n so if i type me25 it will not work so me25 and me25 transaction is there but it will not work. The main reason for that is because we are already in, in one transaction. So you cannot open a new transaction. To open a new transaction from here, you either have to open a new GUI by clicking on this start button or you can type slash O MD25. Now when, I, when, you, when you type slash O, uh, slash O opens this M, whatever transaction that we give after M, uh, after slash O, it will open up in a new screen. And when you type slash n, slash n, it will it will close the existing transaction or existing screen and open a new screen. This is what happens here. Uh, so let's let's first go with the slash o, slash o me25, and when you open it, uh, it opens the new screen here. But then, basically, we have landed into the screen, and if you observe here, this uh, old screen is already there the first screen and we have opened uh, it opened in the second screen now let me try out with uh, me slash n me 22 now what happens here is it will open in the same screen
this screen will be closed and uh, system will open it in the same screen now if you observe here we've got this screen and the second screen is now closed and uh, in the same screen we have opened another one this okay now if you would like to close the screen click on the cancel and it will come to the sap easy access screen so anytime you are on the sap easy access screen you don't have to type slash o or slash n you can directly type the transaction code and you can get it so i'll just type se80 transaction se80 happens to be the abap development workbench this is the main screen from where all the abapers the coding uh, team will uh, will do the programming and uh, creating the objects changing the objects development there are a lot of things that can be done from this abap development workbench which is which happens to be transaction code se80 now that i have now that i have shown how to log in into se80 from the directly typing the transaction code we can also do it from the browser going to the tools and we have a path workbench and then we have the development then we have this um, an overview so this is um, there will be a uh, option for a path uh, development workbench and if you just type that and if you just double click on this a path development workbench automatically it will go there so let me open this application hierarchy sap so it basically opened the hierarchy. Uh, then we have this ABAP workbench. Object navigator will be there. So yeah, this is the object navigator. So when you click on the object navigator, it will come to that SC80 transaction. So whenever you have already landed up in a, in a particular screen and you would like to check the transaction code, all that you have to do is just click on this uh, uh, icon that we see here down below. And you'll get the system details, client details, and all. Now uh, you can see that the transaction code is SE80. Now, uh, now here we what we need to observe here is that once we log in, uh, it it might be possible that most of the times you have to use couple of transactions on a regular basis, especially when end users are using it. Uh, end users have to uh, log in into the transaction codes that we have here. But the consultants will have different transaction codes, which I, I'll be explaining you in this session a later point of time. But if you just see this, and uh, then we have sales order, and then we have the master data. In this master data, we have the business partner, and then we have this uh, sales prospect and create. So let's assume that if end user have to create a sales prospect on a regular basis, then they can actually add this into the favorites down on the top so that they don't have to search it like this so if i double click on this create uh, and I, I just give some a customer number which is existing and then if i go forward uh, it will show up the transaction code here Now, when you, when you open this and we've got this client uh, transaction code, the transaction code is V plus 21. So just in case, if you want to add this V plus 21 into the mains favorites, we can do that. So uh, you can also see the transaction code from here, system and status. So when you go for system and status, we will be getting into the screen wherein you will have this V plus 21 transaction and you will also can see the program name and all. So then we can go for this V plus 21 and uh, this V plus 21 is something which we have here. And uh, so we would like to add this on the main screen. Now, how do we do that? We can just have to go to the favorites, right click on this and you have to click on insert transaction. And in this, we have to give this as V plus 21 and say, okay. Now we have successfully added this in the favorites. So even if you have logged in later, if you have logged out and logged in later, uh, whenever you log in with your credentials, uh, in the favorites, you can see this create sales pro sales prospect by default. And when you double click on this, it will open up this uh, screen 
and you can probably do the whatever function that you want to do you can do it from there and this is something which uh, you can do it on a, uh, for anything that is very frequently used transaction codes now if at all if you you are a functional consultant then all your work will start with from a transaction code called SPRO. This SPRO is a very popular and very important transaction for you as a as a functional consultant. No matter which functional consultant you are, if you are SAP MM consultant, you want to be MM consultant or finance consultant, sales consultant, warehouse or production planning, any any of the functional consultants, you have to start your work of configuration or customization from this SPRO transaction. So you can just see this transaction here. SPRO is the transaction code. And um, you can actually select what you would like to see see here. So if you want to see the system, uh, by default it will show the system. But I would like to see the transaction code on, on, on a regular basis. So transaction code will be here. So we have this SAP reference IMG, IMG information and product analysis. Then if you have to click on the SAP reference IMG and this is where all the configuration have to start. So every configuration, the heart of the configuration is enterprise structure. We have to first configure the enterprise structure. Probably most, most of the times this is done by the finance consultants because all the configurations will start from the finance team. So first configuration will be done by finance team. Even before anyone starts working on the system, first the basis consultants will log in. Now, who are the basis consultants? The administration department. Uh, administration department uh, consultants, what they do is they actually give you the access, take back the access, grant access. These all things are done by the by the uh, by those consultants. Now, here the the administration consultants or the basis consultants would be probably working from the uh, from from uh, uh, transaction codes which start with S E S A S A. So. I'll, I'll just give you an example. SA12. So this is something like uh, SA12. Now SA stands for System Administration. SA stands for System Administration. So what did I type here is SA12. So most of the transaction codes which will start with SA uh, will be for uh, for the administration uh, administration uh, team. Now if at all if anything starts with SE, SE stands for System Engineering and uh, SE38 is the uh, ABAP editor. So this is system engineering is normally taken care by the ABAP people. Now, I'm not saying here that uh, all the technical consultants. Okay, I'm sorry, my dog keeps struggling. Okay, now here we have, uh, uh, we have the administration department is, uh, we were talking about the administration uh, transaction codes and uh, then the system engineering like that ABAP uh, consultants uh, transaction codes and I, so I, I stress on, the, on on that point that uh, all the transactions might not start with SA which are being used by the administration department but most of them are, are used by administration department other than that we have a lot of other transaction codes also which the administration department or uh, the administ administration team uh, uses which starts with other than SA. Now here, uh, now if you go for these tools, most of them are being used by the technical consultants, the development consultants, and those are called ABAP team, ABAP team. So anyone who is working on ABAP uh, area might have to use all these transaction codes. It's always good to remember the transaction codes, but going forward, if you observe, uh, SAP is trying to actually scrap the concept of transaction codes, especially from the end user's perspective. Uh, you know, they are trying to avoid the transaction codes and uh, they have developed uh, user interfaces, which are, which are mostly uh, uh, focused on accessing browsing uh, just by keeping the, keeping the browser on, on a folder and just drag and drop and uh, click kind of a process. There's no need for remembering the transaction codes in the future. So uh, now this is one kind of a process that we have. And these are the web, web client uh, UI frame. If you want to develop a uh, you know, user interface, which is uh, uh, on web based, you can actually make use of this. Now, if you have this office, so even I have observed that even experienced consultants are not much aware of this office, why it has been used. See, basically, uh, you can actually use SAP 
to send mail to each other now let's say two of you are working on sap and if each one of you have a different user id or login id then you can probably log in into one user and then the other person can actually receive your mail so you can send a mail and you can receive a mail uh, within the, within the sap environment and in fact you can also chat with each other so if you go for the workplace and in the workplace we'll have the inbox so i don't have any 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 box any messages here but what i'll do is even though my user id here is 92 user 52 i will send the message to the same user id so that in the inbox there will be one mail that will be coming here so i'm getting i'm giving a new message here the message title here is sap workplace workplace demo and uh, then i'm giving this as like uh, so i'm saying this is a sample mail email within sap environment now whatever you want to type you can type you can also set attachments as well you can also add attachments and send it to others so once I, once we have done this you can actually uh, click on the send but when you when you have to send it uh, the recipient name have to be there so recipient name will be here so what i'll do is i'll give this recipient name as 92 user 50 my user id because uh, you know in this client uh, i'm using my user id again so 92 user 52 enter and this happens to be recipients and keeping it this is a login id or sap logon name so i'm selecting this as sap logon name and then click on save uh, and click on send so when i send it then what happens immediately because i have sent it to my own id uh, in the inbox if i refresh i'll get that mail okay so 100 documents one so this is this will be shown as 100 until i read it so just imagine that you have sent it to some other uh, user then they will be getting a message like this and we double click on it and after double clicking you will be able to see that message here this is a, a sample email within sap environment now here you can also have this attachments just if just in case if you have attachments you can see that here it's in the mail itself so it's a very useful kind of a tool and if you want to directly go into this uh, uh, workplace business workplace you can directly type the transaction code called sbwp sbwp so uh, it's SAP, sbwp stands for sap business workplace now there is one very interesting and important concept that we have to know that you can actually read documentation uh, within sap and understand what exactly uh, you know you can you can read the documentation help documentation how do you do that is from the main screen you can go to the help and you have different types of helps so just in case if your learning content has been installed you can just click on it and the learning content will be open so in my case it's actually let me check that because i have not installed the learning content just in case if it is there it's actually trying to take it from the online so but it is not been installed and connected but if you have the sap library sap library also have to be installed uh, and just in case if it is done you will be able to see that and release notes also you can just check that uh, if it is uh, if it is already been there so if you have my release notes and you can see what is your release and the release that i'm working right now is a 470 4.7 version that's a bit old version of obviously but uh, i'm just trying to show this and uh, definitely in the coming uh, sessions i'm going to also explore the latest uh, you know uh, uh, gui that we are using like uh, the hana studio eclipse and uh, fury stuff like that but now uh, we'll, let me go back to the main screen i'll just type slash n i'll go to the main screen oh so let me go for slash o so the new screen opens here but but then I'll go for slash in SC38. So it opens in SC38 transaction code. 
So when I go back, it actually goes to, okay, I click on start SAP Easy Access. So the SAP Easy Access starts. And now, uh, just in case if you are getting too much of sounds, like you don't want the sound, but you are continuously getting the sound, whenever you click something or whenever you process something, then you can switch off the sounds if you want. And you can even switch on. So in my case, whatever I'm clicking here, it doesn't actually make any noise or sound. So what I can do is I'll switch on the sound and also switch off the sound as well. So I'll go for this SAP options. Now here, this is a settings option that we have here icon. You can click on these options and then you can go for the sound settings and activate audio signal. So when I say activate audio signal and say OK, then what happens here is like whenever you, whenever I'm typing uh, anything slash, uh, uh, I'm just typing AC38 and say enter. So basically I need to just log out and log in so that uh, it'll it'll show up that uh, whatever changes that we have it'll show up. okay i'll just normally go ahead and uh, lock in again so the old one will be logged out now what you see on the top is the is the client so when i say enter now i can any anything that i click here it will actually give you a, a kind of a sound so if I just go for back and if I go for office, so it gives it gives a sound in the back end. So if I double click on this owner, so there is a sound coming in if you observe. And this is coming because I have activated the sound. But if you don't want that sound, let me actually pull out the sound again. So I'll go for the options and I don't want the sound. So activate the sound and just unchecking the activate sound and click on apply then okay and then if i come back and i have to again log in to to do these changes i have to again log in so i'll go for this again uh, you know a logon pad and uh, log in again Okay, so I'm logging in again, and uh, when I log in again, uh, since I switched off the uh, sounds, and now you you will not be able to hear the sound because it has become completely silent. And now, if you observe the uh, the layout is blue color, so if you don't want to, if you don't like blue, and what if you want to just have a green color outlook? So all that you have to do is go to the theme and then we have to go for this uh, whatever changes that we have. Uh, you can go for this Corbu uh, uh, theme or SAP signature theme, enjoy theme. I'm going for enjoy theme. So let's say we have it. This is an old version actually. So when I go for apply, again, these settings will be applied when I log in again. So let me log in again and then uh, check it. And if you see here, You can see a different kind of a layout now once I log in again. So if you see here, this is uh, more or less the same, uh, that, that uh, similar thing, but it is slightly different here. This is what we have. And then we go for options and you can also change the color settings. So colors, color settings, if at all, if you have uh, here, there is no option to do that. But if at all, if it is uh, provided, you can actually change the colors, color in the system. So we have this interaction, key visual, key settings, we have the visualization, we have this notification, control settings, sound settings, which you have to explode. So these are the things that uh, are very uh, basic and uh, good to know. And sometimes it is very helpful uh, just in case to make it more comfortable for you to work. So you can go for the security settings and security settings you can open security configuration and you can do that but, but uh, most of the cases this option of uh, going ahead and uh, giving you the access to set uh, security will not be there so it will be just uh, you know uh, uh, it it will be disabled for you so i'm going for the corbu theme so this corbu theme is something like this apply okay so uh, the layout will be somewhat different here
So this is the layout. And I can show you this. This slightly looks uh, you know, uh, kind of a dull colors and all. You can observe that if you if you observe carefully, you can see that there is a slight change there. But if you have this color change, color change will be uh, quite different, and you can actually go for that. And you can also have the spell checker. You can switch on the spell checker always. And then we have uh, something called. Uh, then we have this uh, default size. You can increase the default size, um, especially when you are writing on editor. If at all, if you are using editor, and then we have these options in which we can also have this uh, font settings. So the, the by default font font setting that we have here is the Courier New and Lemon. So whatever you see here on the menu is of Courier New and Lemon. So let's try to change it to something else. So I'll there are not not many too many options here. So I'll go for something called fixed sys and say uh, here I'll go for the length as 11. Say OK. Say OK. And as as we already know, any settings have to be reflected. Then you have to log in again. So you can see this like um, whatever login you have. Let me go for this logistics and production and master data. We have this bill of material, bill of material, bill of material, create. So when we click on create, we have this as. Um, valid from and then we have this 21222 and uh, the, if you see the font of this 21222 it is basically uh, the concept that we have here now uh, the, the the font that we have changed uh, is visible here now let's go back and to the main screen and explore a few more things here now we have got this uh, you know the question mark wherein it's called f1 help so whatever you you select, if at all, if if it takes, if any documentation exists for that, you can you can have this. Uh, it will be it will be shown here, and then we have this reporting and all. So every concept that we have is segregated based on a particular uh, module. If you have this material management, all the transaction codes which are related for material management, the end user uh, transaction codes are all here. You can access them and you can uh, make use of them. But as a, as I was testing on the uh, on the SPRO, so SPRO is where we can actually do the configuration. So you cannot do the configurations from the functional point of view from this main screen. You have to go to the SPRO and for functional consultants for doing the customization and configuration, this happens to be the main screen. So every time they'll be always logging into this SPRO transaction code, and this is where we have to do all the configurations for the system now it's taking some time to open uh, maybe I, I didn't have to re-log in sometimes uh, what happens here is the administration's administration uh, team sets a particular time so if you're not using the uh, screen for a couple of seconds or minutes automatically it will log it will be logged off so I guess the same thing happened with me so let me try to log in again and uh, uh, start doing it. So 